Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at a beautiful blender add-on called the Nature Generator. This is by far one of the most procedural tool I've seen in Blender, as literally everything you find here is super procedural. And today we're going to take a look at it and explore all of the cool things that you can now do with it. And for those who like to get this, you can simply go over to the link in the description that will bring you right here where you'll be able to see all of these things for yourself. So first things first, once you pop up Blender, how you install this is pretty easy. So for example, if you download the add-on, this comes with a 1K, 2K and 4K map. And to install this is as easy as click, drag, drop into Blender, click on OK, and that's basically it. You've just installed it. Other things you can do is to simply go over to edit, go over to preference, go right here and click on the bugger menu, save your preference. So just in case you close Blender, and pop that open. Once you tap in on your keyboard, you should be able to find this right here. So it is called the Nature Generator. So how this works is extremely simple. Let's go ahead and drag out a new panel and I'm going to switch this over to the asset browser. And right here, you notice that we've got that. So let's go through the very first basic stuff that you need to know. So first off, we've got rocks, cliffs, grounds, mountains, terrains, and NG scatter. And within the rock, cliffs, mountains, and also terrains, you've got base models for each of them. So again, like we mentioned in the beginning of this video, everything that you have here is super procedural. So you can simply select any of these, drag them into your viewport, tap in on the keyboard, go over to your nature generator settings and start making changes to both the shader and the geometry. Now, before we talk about all of the uniqueness of individual objects, let's go ahead and scatter stuff. To scatter things is as easy as going over to the ng scatter object, having the collection selected, drag and drop into your viewport, select any of those models that you like to scatter stuff on. For example, we can just say we'd like to scatter stuff on these and we're going to go in have that selected go over to the nature generator go over to geometry section and click on add scatter effect now once we click on that you would notice that we have this we'll drop that down we can go over to setup have the collection selected and that's how easy it is you've just scattered stuff you can choose between the grass the grass strands the moss shrub rock snow and custom collection so depending on what you like to scatter on this you can easily go ahead and do that. Now, for those who are thinking about custom collection scattering, you can actually go ahead and put all of those custom objects inside a collection and you can reference that collection within the custom setting. Now that we've scattered a custom model here, we can go over to the scatter settings and make changes, which includes density and seed. We're also going to talk about this one in a bit. Now, if you like to change the scale, you can also go ahead and do that. In this case, we can drop that all the way down. Now, if we go back and take a look, at what we have say for example we're working with the moss the shrubs maybe just the grasses we can of course go in and do some cool stuff which includes playing with the scattering settings remember we talked about the density we can choose to scatter things based on slope the altitude the noise and also scatter zone so to each of these you can definitely go ahead and make changes depending on what you're trying to do and depending on the kind of object you're trying to scatter stuff on at the same time, you can also access the instance setting and the object specific setting. And all of these are procedural. Now, the cool thing with this is you can add as many scattering effects as you want, and you can simply layer them and also change them within the property settings. So you can make a simple scatter for the grasses. Then you can make one more for the rocks. You can add as many of these as you want, make the changes to the name so you can keep things organized. More so, you can set these and also go back to the basic rock generator settings and alter this however you choose. Now, the cool thing with this particular one is once you're making the alteration, you notice that the scatter effect conforms to it. And this is the power of procedural generation. The whole thing here, the whole system is just built to be procedurally controlled. Now, with that said, let's talk about some cool stuff that has to do with the shaders and also the geometry properties and how they all differ. So in this case, we're going to explore all of them one after the other. Of course, not in depth, but the very basic stuff. So first things, I'm just going to go ahead and drag this out. So we've got the shader properties and from here we can do some cool stuff. First things, we can go over and make changes to the shader texture. So we can swap the texture however we want. Let's go ahead and expand this so you guys can see it. So we can swap the textures just in case there are multiple textures to one particular one that you can play with. And you can also play with the black 
and the white points. Again, this is totally dependent on what you want. For the color of the rock, you can make changes to that. You can also add surface effect. And surface effect includes the hue, saturation, brightness, and also some noise scaling. These are effects that you can throw onto literally any object that exists here. At the same time, you also have surface details, which deals with the normal strength. So you can see that once we increase and reduce that, that keeps us something. And if you go ahead and bring up some, you'd notice that we have some sort of similarities across all of them. So we can actually go ahead and do stuff like this, which includes throwing in some strength for the noise. So if we like to have that, you can also play with the crack patterns, depending on the patterns that we want for the crack. So you can see that we can increase the cracks. We can increase the radius of the crack. We can reduce that. And this gives you an idea of how aged you would like the rock to be or how aged you like whatever object you're working with. Then we've also got some other things that includes the layers, add some ground effects. And this is if you have your asset on the ground, you can throw that in so we can turn it off, turn that on. You can see that we can also throw in something like a moss effect. So if we like to have that as well, we can also go ahead and do that. We can drop the texture down. We can increase the texture. You know, we can also go over to the advanced shader settings and we can go right here and make some changes too. We've got the wetness and also the snow effect. Now with that said, we can also go ahead and check out the geometry. Within the geometry section, we've got a few things going for as individual objects differ, the same thing happens with the geometries. And like we mentioned earlier, these are all fully procedural stuff. So you can simply go ahead and have fun working with them. If I have this selected, you would notice that we've got some stuff. First things you notice is the low poly mode. And this is for optimization purposes. We can turn this on and it's definitely going to optimize your overall shape. Other than that, you can play with the height. So if this is what you want, you can, you know, make that change yourself. You can play with the adaptivity. You can also play with the resolution. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you crank the resolution too hard, Blender is going to shut down. So we don't want to do that. So we're going to leave it as it is. We can also play with the layers so we can add more, bring that down. We can play with the height, which we've already mentioned before. And you also have things like the crack strength. If you like to have more cracks on this, you can have that. Then you can also go ahead and play with some advanced settings. At the same time, if we take a look at something like this, which you'd also see with this particular one, we have displacement. So we can increase displacement, reduce the displacement, do whatever we think makes sense for the piece that we are working on. And these applies to literally all of them. And you can go ahead play with things like the edge creasing, bring that down, take that up, and you can simply have fun working with both the cleaves that has similar properties, but not exactly the same. Like in this case, if we open up the cleave, you'd notice that we have even more options that we can work with. And the same thing can also be said for the terrains and the mountains too. So for the mountains and the terrains, there are some very cool stuff they can definitely do with this one. So for example, if we go ahead and bring in a simple mountain, that is like this. Let's uh, go ahead and take a look at that. You'd notice that we've got this gizmo and with the gizmo, we can use this to control how the mountain looks. So whether we would like this to be stretched or even enlarged, we can use this particular feature to get the most out of the mountain at this point. Other things that you can do with the mountain includes going over to the properties and making some very interesting tweaks. The tweaks that you can do for the mountain objects, especially in the area of either creating erosion or even just tweaking the overall size, is pretty similar to what you have with terrains. Now, for terrains, you've got even more options of what you can do. And remember, depending on the kind of terrain you're working with, you might possibly have a different setting. So in this case, we're just simply going to go through, make some nice changes, and you can increase the general strength just to buff up the terrain a little bit. You can also play with the viewport vertices, depending on how much resolution that you want. And there's this cool feature that can allow you add water to your terrain. And in this case, we're simply going to add water, play with the height, go over to the shader section. And from here, we can start shading the terrain and also the water. Again, these shader settings are unique to the object that you're working with. So for this one, we're simply going to go ahead and add a little bit of a grass and possibly just throw in that sand to make things look cool. For the water, we're going to make some changes to the overall roughness and we're going to simply play with the noise and get that animation setting fixed. So this makes a lot of sense, especially if you like to have that rippling when the water seems to be moving that rippling effect that gives the illusion of the water moving in your scene. So with this, you can now simply go ahead 
and start doing some cool stuff. Of course, there are tons of things that you can literally do with this particular add-on as it gives you a ton of flexibility and control, especially with the fact that every single thing that it has is super procedural. And of course, for those who are thinking about getting this, you can simply go ahead and grab it right now. These alongside some interesting vegetation tools from the folks at Polygonic and also B Production and maybe a little bit of an atmospheric tool will definitely help you create that amazing landscape quickly and easily exactly how you intend it to be. So this is it. For those who are thinking about checking this one out, you can simply go over to the link in the description where you can see these for yourself. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.